All right, welcome back. In today's video, I wanted to show you my method for editing all of my projects in Premiere Pro, then taking that project into DaVinci Resolve to color grade without using XML files. I, I just can't stand XML files. They're not easy to use, not intuitive. So if you're not a fan of XML files, then this method is for you. Now, this method actually doesn't only pertain to Premiere Pro users. If you use Final Cut Pro, if you use another software, I don't know, like CapCut or something, whatever you use, as long as you take the necessary steps in the beginning, what I'll show in Premiere Pro to export your files correctly, then this method should work between any other editing software and DaVinci Resolve. So I've just got a typical project open here. This is a previous client project that I worked on for Air Asian American Tourister. As you can see here, I've got all my sound design. I've basically fully edited this video without like up until the color grading process. And this is typically what I do. I like to go ahead and just edit as normally, have everything laid out, Go ahead and put my my overlays as you can see here i have some assets and my logos and basically the entire video is done it's complete the only thing missing is my color grading and this is typically the last step in my process so the easiest way that i've found to go ahead and organize everything is i like to have all of my raw clips below a specific point just so that this makes it easier later to understand where i have assets and motion graphics and everything for this method to work, you want to turn off or hide all of the motion graphics or additional kind of like overlays and stuff, things that you don't want color graded, you want to hide it at this point. So by me having it all on these layers here, all I need to quickly do is just hide, as you can see here, I'm just hiding the logo and all these other motion graphics so that I just have basically, even with your speed ramps and whatnot, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have your raw clips, now you have everything kind of like laid out. So at this point, I'll just go ahead and export. Okay, so once you have your media export panels opened up, this is the real key here. What you wanna go ahead and do is go to format and go to QuickTime, go to video and for video codec, you're gonna to wanna to select Apple ProRes 422 HQ. Now, I know a lot of critics are gonna say the highest quality, the highest possible quality is obviously Apple ProRes 44444, but I've tested both out. For the most part, Apple ProRes 422 HQ is basically a ProRes file that is almost, I can't tell any significant quality loss. So this is what I use. And basically what this is, is this is gonna create one single MOV file from your entire project. It's just gonna output this MOV file as a single kind of like video frame. As you can see here, I've got just the base settings. I haven't changed anything. This is again at 4K and I'm just gonna go ahead and export this now. Before we hop into the DaVinci Resolve section, let me go ahead and take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video. At this stage of my workflow, I've locked in my edit, but before color grading, I always make sure my project is sound ready. And that's where Artlist comes in. Whether it's cinematic sound effects to tighten transitions or high quality music to match the vibe of the project, having the right audio from the start makes a huge difference. For example, in this edit, I've already added some whooshes and subtle textures from Artlist to help smoothen out my cuts. Even just adding some ambient sounds and really helping to build that atmospheric element can take your videos to another level. In this Air Asia project that I shot recently and I'm showcasing in this video, I actually used some outside street ambient noises that I sourced from Artlist. There are a bunch of great options and another feature that's really amazing is that Artlist will allow you to find similar sounds to the ones that you like. This makes the whole process super easy, finding high quality audio that really enhance your projects. By handling sound design before jumping into color, I make sure the final pieces feel polished from both an audio and visual perspective. If you wanna level up your edits with professional music and sound effects, check out Artlist. I'll drop a link in the description. Thanks again, Artlist, for sponsoring this video. Okay, once you've exported that, you're gonna go into DaVinci Resolve, drag that file into your timeline here. As you can tell, again, it's ungraded and it's just one single clip. And the key here, the special magic, is you're gonna go to Timeline and you're gonna click Detect Scene Cuts. And it just automates all the cuts. So basically you have the exact same project, but it's now cut up into how it was edited. Sometimes in like fast moving sequences, there are a couple issues where it like misses a cut here and there. And in that case, all you have to do is hold down command and click on a cut and delete it. And that'll get rid of a cut, but that wasn't a mistake there. We'll command Z that and leave that. But let's say for whatever reason, like it doesn't pick up a cut. All you have to do is click on your playhead and yeah, command forward slash, there we go. And that'll make the cut. Whatever key binds you have, you can just go ahead and recut it up. But it does a great job. It basically goes through the entire thing and just cuts it up exactly how you need it to be. So at this point, you can go ahead and select whatever LUT or whatever color grade you have and just apply it, boom. 
Once you finish color grading your entire project, then you go back into your deliver. And for this one, again, you're gonna just name it whatever. I usually like to call it uh, whatever the project was and then graded. And again, you're just gonna export this as a QuickTime. Again, you could do this as Apple ProRes 4444, quadruple fours, or what I like to do is just 422HQ. That seems like a perfect kind of balance. And I leave everything else as is. And let's go ahead and add this to render queue. And you're just gonna export this. And that's it, let me go back to Premiere Pro. Let me go ahead and open up a track here that I can place this graded file in between the raw clips and my motion graphics assets or whatever like logos you have. You're just gonna go ahead, click and drag that. I'm gonna unlink it and delete that audio layer because I don't need that audio layer. And I'm just gonna place it in this track. And all of a sudden you've got a graded track, a graded clip going from DaVinci Resolve back to your native software. And then you can just unhide everything. And boom, you've got a super streamlined way to go between your Premiere Pro and DaVinci files. And you don't lose too much time filling around with XML files. And it's just super easy, super streamlined. So yeah, that's a super streamlined method that I personally use to go between Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Again, this method can work with any other editing softwares as long as you export at the highest possible MOV file or highest possible ProRes file, then this process shouldn't necessarily see a very noticeable change. I mean. I can't personally see any noticeable quality loss. And I've used this across multiple client projects over the years, mostly for social assets, and I've never had an issue. I know a number of professionals are gonna disagree with me on this method, but if you're editing a blockbuster film, this method is not for you. You should be working on XML files. You should have a much more streamlined workflow. This is for the person who is working on perhaps YouTube videos or like myself, smaller client projects, social first client projects. The purpose of this method is to streamline and quickly allow you to go ahead and edit in your traditional sense without having to worry about how you stack transitions and how you stack everything. All you have to do is basically just have everything organized so that you can export just the raw clips and then bring those into DaVinci Resolve, quickly cut them, quickly edit them, and then bring them back to your native software. If you're worried about quality loss, then go ahead and try this method out for yourself and let me know in the comments below. But for what I found and what my other fellow creatives have used in the professional sense in Tokyo, this is a pretty streamlined process. And we haven't noticed any problems. If there are better solutions, again, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'm always open to changing my workflow and learning new things. If you have any specific questions, feel free to drop me a comment. If you want to check out my store, I've got LUTs, transitions, sound effects, all that jazz. As always, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.